Yvonne, I think today there's been a bit of a shift in emphasis um, in respect perhaps of the rental platforms of um, putting forward a view of, of the proprietors as often being quite niche, uh, small-scale operators, maybe in rural areas, um, looking to get extra income, you know, potentially uh, putting a room in their principal residence up, up for rent and all of that. That's one side of the debate. Um, but the reality is that in the major cities of this country where we have clearly designated rent pressure zones, there are properties. Uh, we've all been around the houses on this 12,000 figure today, and I'm not going to comment further on that in terms of its validity, but I think it would be um, disingenuous to suggest that there aren't properties within major cities of Ireland that are designated rent pressure zones that are being taken away from the long-term rental market by virtue of the fact that they're being continuously used as short-term lets. Um, and, you know, I accept the fact that, that, that there may be further tweaks needed to this legislation. Um, and as I said, our first recommendation was to focus on home sharers and to say that perhaps we need to, we need to classify exactly which aspects of the forthcoming legislation specifically apply to them. But let's not, um, let's not lose sight of the issue from our perspective within Threshold that there will still be a significant number of properties returned. And, and we've heard a lot of discussion here about the obstacles in place and planning rules being the elephant in the room for pre preventing a return of certain types of accommodations uh, to the long-term rental market. But that does, certainly does not mean that there won't be a significant proportion of them returned in rent pressure zones.